Well, here we are on Fort Lauderdale Beach with Hurricane Dorian about 300 miles that away approaching. And notice that the weather here right now isn't too bad. Look, smooth seas, not too many clouds around. And that reminds me of the day just before Hurricane Andrew hit here in 1992. I was. Uh, a sailing instructor and a yacht broker down in Miami and we helped tie some boats up and then we evacuated and when I was leaving it looked beautiful I mean just just a few little clouds in the sky nice gentle breeze out of the east and who would have known if you would have lived a hundred years before you know with no advance warning who would have known that this huge category 5 storm was gonna hit in just 24 hours and so this is why there was so much more loss of life back then so today we get more warning which is fortunate and um, one thing that really surprised me after Andrew was that the largest marina in Miami at the time it was dinner key and was configured with 1200 slips and I was one of the first to get back because I had a four-wheel drive Jeep so I could get get over or around the trees that had fallen over all the streets and a friend of mine who lived there said hey man you got to go look at uh, Dinner Key because <laughs> everything's destroyed except for one yacht and that was a Beneteau 51 that was tied up and prepared properly and so how was it tied up well this owner was experienced with storm preparation and hurricanes and what he did is he created a spider web of lines and I counted 24 segments of line now he used his anchor line you know he he doubled that up in some places so anyway but he created this spider web that kept the boat from moving fore and aft or side to side but it would allow for the storm surge which in that area was eight to ten feet and he he got a little lucky because there was a concrete pier in on one side of him that protected him from some of the breakaways that caused the most damage in these events. And, and so a breakaway would be like a big, heavy commercial vessel or powerboat that, that broke loose and just caused the domino effect of wrecks. <laughs> and so he, this Beneteau owner got a little lucky, but the spider web of lines that he tied or, with adequate thickness of line are the reason that his boat didn't get damaged and I'm gonna draw you a diagram of that so here is the best way I've found to tie up a boat for a tropical storm or hurricane this represents our catamaran and these blue lines are the fore and aft springs now when you lead these as far back as you can and keep them very tight this prevents the boat from moving forward and aft so these are really important and the red lines keep the boat from moving from side to side so you want to have leads that don't chafe the hull so this will have to be led a little further out than straight aft and where these lines cross the gunnel, you want to put chafing gear because there's tremendous amounts of chafing that goes on during a hurricane. And some of the items that we've used for chafing gear would include uh, like a garden hose where you take a one foot section of it, slice it down the side, put it around the line, duct tape it or put gorilla tape, which is actually better, and some people would uh, sew or 
or tie it to the hull just so it can't floss its way out. Now, that Beneteau 51 I was talking about that survived Hurricane Irma had, in addition to these essential lines, which were inch and three-quarter diameter, three-strand line, other lines in a spider web pattern with 12 on each side. So I remember that, that this boat had, had some lines going, going forward, um, and you want to run them to other contact points so you're spreading the load out as much as you can. Now, there, there was nothing to fasten to back here, but I, I do recall they put extra spring lines along the sides, too, for a total of 12 on each side. So this is a way to make sure that you maximize your possibilities for hurricane damage. The other thing that the, the reason why this Beneteau uh, owner was so lucky is that on this side over here, there was a concrete pier that stopped the breakaway boats from piling up on him. So positioning your boat is important too. You want to try and stay away from these other boats if you can. Now, let's talk about what happened most recently in the Caribbean with Hurricanes Irma and Maria. Those two storms just happened to hit directly the two most populated catamaran areas in the Caribbean, which were the BVI and St. Martin. And in previous years, the eye walls never really went right over the hurricane holes there. So the yachts that were tied up in the mangroves survived with, without too many bits of damage. But what happened the last time, to, to understand it, you need to, to know that all of those boats were absentee owner boats most of them were in the big charter fleets. And so, for example, the, the big charter companies, the big three, have you know, around 100, 120 boats each in the, in, in the BVI, for example. And what they do is, because they, they have limited staff and space to put these boats, they get started in June with pre- we call it hurricaneizing the boats, which means they, they take them over to the hurricane hull, the mangroves, <clears throat> they remove the sails and the deck gear, they take duct tape, they, they tape the hatches because, you know, if you have 120 mile an hour of driving rain, it's like putting a pressure washer on your hatch and that'll force water into the boat, which you don't want. And so they prep the boats, they put them in big rafts, you know, there might be like 10 yachts in a raft. And, and so what happened this time is <clears throat> the eye walls went there. And these eye walls can sometimes have tornadoes and you know high winds. And you know, this is what caused all the damage. Now, what happened to the boats that were owner occupied? That is cruisers who live on board down there. Well. They had no problems whatsoever. Why? Because they usually, you get 10 days notice of these things, so you have time to think about what you're gonna do. And when those hurricanes approach the Caribbean, which are mostly a set of islands, the windwards and the leewards run north and south, you know, up and down, and then the wind usually comes from the easterly quadrants as the hurricane's approaching. And, you know, it increases up to 20, 25 knots, you know, several days prior to the arrival of the eye. So if you have a catamaran and you simply set sail to the south, because most of these storms go from east to west or northwest at that point in the Caribbean, 
So it's a fast run. I mean, you can be out of harm's way in a day and a half, two days. All you have to do is just set sail. And you know, catamarans love to go on beam reaches and broad reaches. They go really fast. So you can make good time, get out of harm's way, and head south. And just go anchor off of the island of Grenada. You could even go to Trinidad. And, uh, or you can go to the Dutch ABC Islands. That's Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. And, as a side note, I went to Aruba the last two summers on yacht deals, and there were yards there that still had space availability on the hard or in wet slips, and the prices were very reasonable for this day in age, which was 35 cents a foot a day, you know, for a wet slip or a dry space, and then if you haul out, you have to pay extra for the haul out. So, those people that lived on boats had no problems whatsoever. And people say, oh, well, where can I keep my boat uh, during hurricane season if I'm not going to be on it? Well, like I said, the ABC Islands are the best deal in town. Um, the, there's another hurricane hole in Guatemala. It's Rio Dulce, and, which is right near the Belize-Guatemala border. And, you know, there's 2,000 yachts that go there for the hurricane season and you know hurricanes just they don't go there uh, it's surrounded by mountains too so it breaks up the wind if by some freak chance the storm a storm goes there and you know prices there are really inexpensive I've seen slips with water and electricity for 400 a month for a 40-foot cat down there now prices can rise over time but that's that's a good deal and a lot of American retirees go there because of the costs of living are so low, you can live like royalty on Social Security down there. So, something to consider. If you're keeping a boat in the U.S., I can give you some ideas about where to keep the boat in hurricane season. Just, you know, give me a call, send me an email, and you can best contact me by going to my website, largecatamaransforsale.com. And I'll be happy to talk to you about insurance, hurricane prep, storage, whatever. Meanwhile, say a little prayer for our friends in the Bahamas. They're going to they're gonna get hit big time in the Abacos. And uh, I wish you all the best.